This is Don Ivey, and Don's from the Coquille Tribe, and Don's going to share with us a little bit about Oregon's coastal people. Morning, Tom. Morning, Don. Hey, uh, we're gathered around here. Uh, this, is, this is Julie, and this is Nancy, and uh, we're talking with Michael and Jessica about uh, some of the resources that grow on the estuary that were important to Native people uh, for uh, many thousands of years, as a matter of fact. The archaeological record on the Southern Oregon coast uh, says that folks have lived here for uh, 10,000 years or more. Wow. Anyway, so here we are today. It's September. This is the time of the year when the salmon are coming into the estuaries and the time when crabbing's getting good again. And, and it's also the time when native peoples would, would be beginning to head back home and start to repair their baskets, make baskets, get ready for the winter time, get, wet, get ready for uh, the winter season and storytelling and those sorts of things. Here, while here. we're here, but look at some of the stuff that we're talking about today. We're talking about using the resources from the estuary, gathering them up, making basket materials, open weave baskets to put fish in or put crabs in, or to gather eelgrass and to dry it and then use it for basket making materials later on. So this is Nancy. Nancy, tell us a little bit more about what's going on. So today we have Julie, and Julie is making a traditional basket that would be made this time of year on the south coast. She's working with spruce roots and hazel sticks that were gathered right here. And Julie herself is a descendant of uh, the original people of the South Slough. She ran around this area all her life. And so we're using this old historic basket as our model to make the new basket. And so what we're doing is we're keeping traditions alive by uh, doing that. And then we have some other things here. We have cedar cape, burden baskets, materials, all things made from our South Slough area. We're talking and about- And can I just ask you, cedar, what is cedar? This is cedar bark. It's the inner bark of the cedar tree. And we harvest this in the spring when the sap's up. And this is built, made into capes, clothing, tools, basketry. It was a universal uh, basket material. And that could shed water? Yes, it shed water. Wow. And of course, in the uh, olden days, it was covered with fish oil so that it would help repel water even more. And after lots of use, it would become really soft and be quite a comfortable coat for a person here on the Sioux. Beautiful color, very good. Now we have some things further down the table here. Let's move on down, come on students. <laughs> Right. Tom, I want to share a couple of other things here. What we were talking uh, earlier, <clears throat> earlier before you arrived, that uh, uh, the estuary is an important place for salmon and crabs, but also a place where the lamprey would swim uh, into the estuary in the springtime. And we've got a couple of, of demonstrations here. Of, pretend this is a lamprey. Pretend it's swimming upstream, swimming into the trap, gets trapped. It's anchored on the bottom of the river. Now, a lamprey is a, like an eel, right? Lamprey's Very slimy. Like an eel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We, commonly, we call them eels here locally, but lamprey, and it is a fish, and it's a really important uh, fish for native peoples. And here are some more basket uh, making materials that we've gathered from the estuary uh, and nearby the estuary. Cedar is important for clothes making, certainly, but cedar is also important for helping us make tools. This is be an adze. Uh, this is a carved cedar handle, stone adze is put on there and then that would be used to work this wood and to rake this wood out and make for cedar planks or carving canoes lots of different things very, so the cedar is really a durable and very important part of the life of cedar the is the people. tree of life for native peoples on the southern oregon coast one last thing i want to show you here before the, if anybody has any questions michael Stick your arm in here, Michael. I want to. I want to show folks one of the ways. <laughs> We're talking about fishing today and fish and those sorts of things. I want you to wiggle your arm like your arm is a fish, and I want to show you how native peoples this time of year would have been harvesting a fish. This is called a leaster spear, and this is the bottom end of the leaster spear. This is the fish catching tool. And we're catching Michael's arm there, pretending that's a fish. Oh. And that's native peoples would stab that fish and then pull that fish back take it off of there, put it in a basket, lay it out somewhere on the plank, split plank, to process that, dry that for the winter time, and we'd have wintertime food. So I'm guessing, Michael, that you'd prefer to not be one of those fish. Is that right? <laughs> no. No, no, thanks. Mm -hmm. Do we... If Jessica were an eel, she'd be, I'd be shaking her out of this basket <laughs> in the springtime. <laughs> very good. Well, Don and Nan and Julie, thank you very much for sharing uh, what you have, and thanks hey, for coming out have today. Have a good time, you guys. All right.